Launching the Visual Inspect application will bring up the home screen. Beginning in the top left, there are four options. The first option, illustrated by a plus sign in the top left of the screen, is the Import option. This option is used to import information into the application. This can be done in four different methods. New Product, which allows a new product to be manually added to the application. This is the only manual addition function, although it does allow the most customization as the product is completed completely manually. Copy from iTunes, which allows products to be moved over to the application via an iTunes connection. Copy from FTP server, which will allow elements to be imported directly from FTP folders. FTP servers are updated within the application settings. Once the connection is created, the option to copy from FTP server will become available. Copy from Example Server, which is used to copy an existing product using a file transfer protocol, FTP. The next option from the home screen is the Export tool. Exporting is done in one of two ways from the application. The first is to send the entire file, either as an MWPAK or Excel annotations file. The second option is to share the information with another application within the same file types. The third tool along the top left of the application is the Tree View. The Tree View command is used to view the element by the individual parts of the element. We will take a more in-depth view at this tool later in the course. The fourth and final option in this section is to change the view of the stored elements. Moving to the right side of the application, there is a second group of commands. The first tool is used to copy annotation of an element. We will discuss creation of annotations later in the course. The next tool is used to review all the photographs that are saved within the application. The next tool is used to view QR codes. Next is the Deletion button. Clicking this tool will allow you to delete elements from the application. The final tool is the Settings of the application, which we will review later in the course. The Name and Date option above the elements is used to sort all elements either by name or date. The following section are the elements themselves. It is important to note that when the application is first turned on, there will be no elements loaded to your product. These elements have been created by the Faro team and moved over to the application for demo purposes. The Assembly Faro Plate is the element that we will be using for the remainder of the application. To expand an element, double-click the image. With the Assembly Faro Plate open, there are numerous gestures that can be used to interact with the element. Using a single finger, you can rotate the object from the center axis within the screen. The center axis, or focal point, is defined by the orange target that appears when your finger is placed. The object itself may be moved within the screen by using two fingers to drag or push the assembly. Finally, you can zoom in and zoom out using the traditional spreading or closing of two fingers respectively. Within an element, there are additional options to interact with the chosen element. Beginning in the bottom left of the screen, the first tool is the Tree View. This tool is used in the same fashion as the Tree View shown on the home screen. However, accessing this tool here will show the created Tree View for this specific element. To the right are options to zoom in and out of the element. This tool is used to zoom in or out in steps, as opposed to using hand gestures, which is continuous. The third tool is the Fit Object tool, which will fit the element to the center of the screen. The final tool is the Show Hide tool. This tool is used to toggle between shown and hidden elements. This tool may be used to hide annotations or specific parts of the element that may not be useful at certain points in the automation. Specific objects may also be hidden by tapping the specific object on screen. A dialog box will appear with six options for interacting with the part. The first icon is used to visualize the part's location within the tree view. 
The second icon is used to hide the specific part. The third icon is used to hide or show numerous objects. Click each object that you would like to hide and press Done when complete. The fourth icon is used to create a point of axis. The fifth icon is used to move to top-down view. This may be handy when viewing a specific side or piece on an object. The final icon is used to display additional information relating to the part that has been selected. Moving down the line, the next tool in the list is the measuring tool. Click this tool to open the measure popover. The first tool within this menu is the absolute command. After clicking this command, the next part that you touch will be measured and the position will be published on screen. The following tool is the relative command. This tool is used to measure from one point to another along the element. In this instance, we have chosen the inside of an oval slit on the left side of the ferro plate and the inside of a hole impressed on the front of the ferro plate. Click once to set the starting point. Clicking a second time will create an end that will illustrate a measurement between the two. The next tool is the Measure Radius command. This tool allows the radius of a cylinder or circle to be measured. Click the tool, followed by the object to be measured to see the radius on screen. The next tool in the popover is the Measure Angle command. This tool is used to measure an angle within the element and is used in the same fashion. The final command is used to set a new axis point on the element. Using this tool will allow you to create the axis point by clicking on the element. Finally, the X at the right of the popover allows you to close the menu. The next tool in the list is the sectioning tool. Tap the sectioning tool to bring up the sectioning popover. Within the popover, X, Y, and Z are used to section in each direction respectively. The face command, illustrated as a hand and square box, is used to section in a user-specified direction. The final command within the sectioning menu is the edge command. This tool creates a user-defined section normal to a selected edge. Step size, section view, and position can also be edited within the sectioning popover. Clicking the Annotations tool brings up the Annotation popover. From this menu, click the plus sign. Tap the location that you wish to add the annotation to. A second tap will confirm the location the text will appear. The text menu will appear so that the text and images can be added to mark any specific location. Notice the option in the lower right titled Use for Evaluation. This mark must be turned on for the annotation to be able to be exported. If the option is left off, the annotation will not be exportable later. The second icon is used to move the annotation. Once selected, the icon will become movable. The third icon is used to move the anchor point. This icon may be used if an annotation is placed in error. The fourth icon is to delete an annotation. This is done by clicking the icon, followed by clicking the annotation you would like to delete. The next command along the bottom of the element screen is the virtual marker command. Clicking the command will bring up the virtual marker popover. This command is used to create additional virtual markers that can be placed within your element. The plus sign will add a new virtual marker. The next command is the Edit Marker command. This tool allows you to edit the size, adapter, and type of marker that is used in the element. The next tool, illustrated as a pencil with an arrow, is used to edit the location or orientation of the created marker. The third tool in this series is used to create a marker within a hole in the element. The next tool is the Invert Marker command. This tool is used to invert any of the created markers on your element. The trash is to delete the selected marker. Finally, the final tool in this popover is to create an axis point to rotate your element. The final tool located along the bottom of the screen is the augmented reality camera, represented by AR with a video camera image. This tool will be discussed further later in another video.
Moving to the top right of the application, there are three additional commands. The first command is the marker scanner. This tool is used to scan an area for markers and will activate the camera on the iPad to locate and mark any visible markers. The next command is screenshot. This tool is used to take images of the scene to be used in application annotations. Finally, the wrench in the top right corner of the application is the app settings menu. Within this command are options to edit the element, camera, and augmented reality settings. There is also a search command that may be accessed from this menu that will search within the elements for results.